What's up guys, my name's Brandon and this past week was another one that went exactly as expected with the release of iOS 15.4 Beta 4 on Tuesday along with the macOS, watchOS, and tvOS updates. And in this video, we're going to be discussing even more new features and changes found in 15.4 along with an update on the performance and battery life. We're also going to discuss what's coming next and when, Apple event invites, the latest Apple news from the past week, and more. But first, let's talk about even more new features and changes found here in Beta 4. And the first thing has to do with a new AirPlay icon for the Roku streaming stick. So you can see right there for Roku, you have a new glyph icon in the AirPlay 2 menu. Another change is inside of our settings. If we go to notifications and then down, you will see we have a new subsection here and a new glyph icon for tracking notifications. So I'm not too sure exactly what this is for. I'm guessing it has something to do with Find My and the new anti-stalking features that were added in 15.4 Beta 4 when you go to set up your AirTag, but we now have this under our notification settings. Another change I noticed here in Beta 4 is inside of the wallet application. If you tap on the little wallet icon up in the top right to pull up your card information, you will see that there are multiple changes here compared to previous versions of iOS. So here's iOS 15.3.1 on the left, 15.4 on the right. You could see multiple changes. So we have the virtual card number and it says underneath of that, use to pay online when Apple Pay is not available or when making purchases over the phone. So that has been added there. Also, you could see that in previous versions, it said other card numbers and it showed physical card and device account number. But now we just have a whole subsection here for additional card numbers. And when you tap into that, you could see it says titanium card number and Apple Pay card number. And then lastly, the description under advanced fraud protection has also been updated. Just a minor change in the verbiage right there. There's also yet another change inside of the magnifier application. So there have been several changes to the magnifier app here in 15.4, but there's another one I found here in 15.4 beta 4 and you can see it's just the padding between these toggles is just further apart there's more padding between each toggle than there was on previous versions so you can see i can see all the toggles here on 15.3.1 but on 15.4 i have to scroll over to see that last one all the way and that's because there's more padding between these toggles of course we have multiple other changes as well like the lens picker right there and the glyph icons a lot of changes inside of magnifier for 15.4. And then if we head into our settings and go down to Safari and then all the way down to the bottom to advanced and to experimental features, you'll notice under the Bs that the built-in web notifications toggle has been removed in beta four, but the push API has remained. So if you go down to the Ps right here, you can see push API has remained inside of the experimental features, but the built-in web notifications has been removed. And this is likely why, if we go into our settings, a general background app refresh, why the web toggle is missing here in beta four, it's because the whole built-in web notifications has been removed from Safari. So I'm not sure if Apple's pushing that feature back or if it's just not gonna be there until the final, we don't know just yet, but we will see in due time. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, I have to talk about the storage bug pretty much every time I make one of these videos because I continue to get a ton of comments and a ton of questions about this bug. And of course, it's just when the storage doesn't load up. It just sits here and hangs forever. For a lot of people, that has been fixed in beta three and beta four, but I'm still seeing people say it's not fixed. But I've noticed that most people that are saying it's not fixed are on older devices, like an iPhone 7, iPhone 8, even iPhone 10. So if you're on an older device, it seems like it's a lot higher likelihood that your storage is gonna sit here and hang. And it's most likely due to the fact that you really don't have too much storage remaining. So your device is just moving really slow. It's not everybody, but that's just a trend I've kind of noticed. But for most people that has been fixed, and if it hasn't been fixed for you, at this point, I don't know if it's gonna be fixed, honestly. I mean, it may be fixed in the final version, but at this point, it's been fixed for most people. If it's not fixed for you, it may just never be fixed. You may just have to reset your device and do a restore and just get all your data back and maybe it'll be fixed after that. I'm not sure what to tell you. And speaking of things I've just kind of given up on and probably will never be fixed. If we go into our AirPlay right here, if you go to AirPlay to a HomePod, there are still lag issues and sometimes connection issues where it says it just simply cannot play that music on a HomePod. So I've given up on you know expecting this to be fixed because it's still just very laggy when you go to new songs, when you go to the queue, it's laggy in there. Just a lot of issues with AirPlay to HomePod still 
and 15.4 beta 4. And then I told you guys I was going to start testing out the cell connectivity on these betas and I did that for a couple of days here on 15.4 beta 4 and I have to say connectivity is actually better than 15.3.1. I don't know what it is but 15.3.1 messed up my especially 5G connectivity. It seems like I just don't get signal as a, in as many places as I used to or I just be a lot slower but it seems to be better here on 15.4 beta 4 so that is a good sign i would expect 15.4 to fix any issues you may have had with connectivity when it does get released of course that is very you know case to case it may not be the case for everybody but for me it seems to be better but aside from that i really don't have too many other issues with ios 15.4 and based on your guys's comments and your feedback you don't really have too many issues either so 15.4 is looking like it's going to be a tremendous update for a lot of people i mean a ton of features in the update not to mention better stability and better cell connectivity i don't know about the battery life yet battery life still isn't on par with 15.3.1 yet in my opinion so battery life may not be there but it looks like performance and cell connectivity along with all those features are going to be there for a nice big update probably the biggest again to ios 15. all right so now let's talk about what's next for apple because we are going to see a lot of stuff happen over the next couple of weeks so next week is going to be the beginning of march so monday is going to be the last day of february the 28th but i would not expect anything to be released on that day i would expect it to be on tuesday march 1st now on march 1st i would expect either a beta 5 or an rc version of ios 15.4 but not only that i would also expect event invites to go out from apple for their spring event which is presumably going to be on march 8th exactly a week from the day those invites would go out and if we don't get those event invites on the first we may get them on the second but if you don't get them either one of those two days I will have a little bit of you know concern over the fact that we're having an event on the 8th because Apple usually sends out invites a week in advance when it's a digital event like this. But we'll see. And whatever drops in terms of software on Tuesday the 1st, that's going to determine what comes on the following week on the 8th. So if we get an RC build next, so if on Tuesday, or maybe not Tuesday, sometime next week, if we get an RC build, I think that means that we're gonna get the final on the 8th after the Apple event. But if we get beta 5 next week on the 1st, that means that we'll probably see an RC build after the Apple event and then the public release maybe a couple of days later on the 9th or the 10th. So that's why it's going to be very important and very interesting to see what comes next week because that's going to determine what comes on the following week. And of course, we should also have confirmation on if we are in fact getting an Apple event on the 8th or not. All right, so now let's move on to the Apple Weekly segment of this video where I recap some of the latest Apple leaks and rumors from the past week. So first up, let's talk about that March event. So we've heard that new Macs are coming at this event, but now we have a better idea as to which specific Macs these are going to be thanks to Mark Gurman. So in his latest Power On newsletter, he says, quote, the third round of Mac updates is likely to kick off on March 8th when Apple is planning to hold its first media events of the year. The presentation is likely to focus on the 5G iPhone SE and iPad Air, but I'm told to expect at least one new Mac that day. He then listed all of the new Macs expected to release in 2022 and follows that up with why he expects the entry-level MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini to be coming at this event. So just as we predicted a few weeks back, and now German seems to be on the same page, we are hoping to see a new 13-inch MacBook Pro and a new Mac Mini at this event. But it gets even better. So German then mentions that, quote, with the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips already on the market, I don't believe the iMac Pro launch is too distant either. While we'll get new Macs in March, I'm told Apple is already gearing up for another round of Mac releases around May or June. So we can potentially see the announcement of the new iMac Pro at the Worldwide Developers Conference when we see iOS 16 in early June, and then a final release in the fall. And a revamped MacBook Air is also in the cards to be released around the same time. We also got some insight on the new M2 and Mac Pro chips and how they're going to compare to the M1 and M1 Max. The M2's CPU will probably be a bit speedier than the M1, but the chip should retain the same 8-core architecture. Graphics may get a boost though from 7 or 8 cores to 9 or 10. And for the Mac Pro chips, those are going to come in two main flavors, one that doubles the M1 Max's capabilities and one that quadruples it. Look for 20 CPU cores and 64 graphics cores on the first chip and 40 CPU cores and 128 graphics cores on the second. So those are some insane 
numbers and you know very exciting times if you've been waiting to upgrade your mac but you've been holding back it looks like nearly every model of mac is going to see a nice upgrade this year especially if you're in the market for a pro level mac now moving on to something a little bit further away let's talk iphone fold so whether you like them or not the folding phone seems to be the next big thing for smartphones and now it looks like apple has delayed their iteration once again according to ross young so young originally said that the foldable iphone could launch as early as 2023 but now it's looking like 2025 at the earliest he says quote we delayed our expectations for apple entering the foldable smartphone market by two years to 2025 after discussions with our supply chain contacts the company does not appear to be in a hurry to enter the foldable smartphone market and it may take even longer than that but what's even more intriguing than a foldable phone he also suggests that apple could eventually release a foldable mac he says this quote on the other hand we are now showing apple in our roadmap for foldable notebooks we hear there is interest at the largest size yet around 20 inches this size could create a new category for apple and would result in a true dual use product a notebook with a full-size keyboard when folded and for use as a monitor when not folded and used with an external keyboard it may also allow for uhd and 4k resolution or even higher at that size the time frame is likely later than 2025 though it could be 2026 or 2027. so after hearing that to me personally i'm looking forward to that a lot more than i am a foldable iphone what about you guys i mean that seems super intriguing to me maybe like a foldable macbook or a foldable ipad something like that that's 20 inches i think that's going to be absolutely awesome it's not gonna be the first time we've seen something like that but from apple i think it would be awesome what do you guys think let me know in the comments down below next up we have an update on apple's ar vr headset so remember how mark german reported that it was delayed until 2023 well it might not be and i say this because digitimes just recently reported that apple has completed key production tests for the headset and they say it's going to be released by the end of 2022 so this is great news to hear and you know digitimes doesn't have as good of a track record as somebody like mark german but their specialty is in the supply chain so they could really be onto something here so we'll have to wait and see but i would love to see this headset before 2023 and then finally we have a very interesting story about how volvo gave their employees an iphone and apple watch for improved productivity and organization so computer world reports that volvo is giving their personal service technicians an iphone and an apple watch and that since then 80% of technicians using the new hardware have increased their customer satisfaction scores. Volvo has also seen a 30% increase in post-service follow-up calls and emails to customers and a 40% decrease in paper printouts. Those are significant improvements. And this is awesome in multiple ways. You can read the whole article to see everything about this, but they mention that the technicians use the walkie-talkie feature to talk to each other more easily. They can also just glance at their watch to see the customer's name, relevant notes, and card details when their hands are busy, you know, changing oil or rotating tires. It's just a lot more convenient than looking at a paper or pulling up their phone. So I threw this story into the video just because I thought it was a really cool story about how the Apple Watch is improving productivity and a space that we probably haven't really thought about it. So this is something I could see becoming even more widespread, especially for the engineering and maybe even the construction industry where hands are always occupied. And I also want to know what you guys think. Do you think that having an iPhone and an Apple Watch provided at your workplace is going to increase your productivity and increase you know, the bottom line of the business? Let me know. I mean, I think that could be used in a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different workplaces that I'm not even thinking of right now. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that as well down there in those comments. But there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional info on iOS 15.4. So if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 15 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.